God and Lord, strengthened by the intercession of the Immaculate Virgin Mary, Mother of God, of Blessed Saint Michael the Archangel, of the Blessed Apostles Peter and Paul and all the saints, we confidently undertake to repulse the attacks and deceits of the devil. God arises, his enemies are scattered, and those who hate him flee before him. As smoke is driven away, so are they driven. As wax melts before the fire, so the wicked perish at the presence of God. Behold the cross of the Lord, flee bands of enemies. He has conquered the lion of the tribe of Judah, the offspring of David. May your mercy, Lord, descend upon us as, our, as great as our hope in you. Let us pray. We will all make the big sign of the cross on ourselves wherever we see the cross on our streams. We drive you from us, whoever you may be, every unclean spirit, all satanic powers, all infernal invaders, all wicked legions, assemblies and sects. In the name and by the power of our Lord Jesus Christ, may you be snatched away and driven from the church of God and from the souls made to the image and likeness of God and redeemed by the precious blood of the divine Lamb. Most cunning serpent, you shall no more dare to deceive the human race, persecute the church, torment God's elect, and sift them as wheat. The Most High God commands you, he with whom in your great insolence you still claim to be equal, he who wants all men to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. God the Father commands you, God the Son commands you, God the Holy Spirit commands you, Christ, God's Word made flesh, commands you. He who to save our race outdone through your envy humbled himself becoming obedient even unto death. He who has built his church on the firm rock and declared that the gates of hell shall not prevail against her because he will dwell with her all days even to the end of the world. The sacred sign of the cross commands you as does also the power of the mysteries of the Christian faith. The glorious mother of God the Virgin Mary commands you she who by her humility and from the first moment of her immaculate conception crushed your proud head the faith of the holy apostles peter and paul and of the other apostles commands you the blood of the martyrs and the pious intercession of all the saints commands you thus cursed dragon and you diabolical legions we adjure you by the living god by the true god by the holy god by the god who so loved the world that he gave up his only son that every soul believing in him might not perish but have life everlasting. Stop deceiving human creatures and pouring out to them <clears throat> the poison of eternal damnation. Stop harming the church and hindering her liberty. Begone Satan, inventor and master of all deceit, enemy of man's salvation. Give place to Christ in whom you have found none of your works. Give place to the one holy Catholic and apostolic church acquired by Christ at the price of his blood. Stoop beneath the all-powerful hand of God. Tremble and flee when we invoke the holy and awesome name of Jesus. This name which causes hell to tremble. This name to which the virtues, powers and dominations of heaven are humbly submissive. This name which the cherubim and seraphim praise unceasingly, repeating, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord, the God of armies. O Lord, hear our prayer and let our cry come unto you. May the Lord be with you and with your spirit. Let us pray. God of heaven, God of earth, God of angels, God of archangels, God of patriarchs, God of prophets, God of apostles, God of martyrs, God of confessors, God of virgins, God who has power to give life after death and rest after work, because there is no other God than you, and there can be no other. For you are the creator of all things, visible and invisible, of whose reign there shall be no end. We humbly prostrate ourselves before your glorious majesty, and we beseech you to deliver us by your power from all the tyranny of the infernal spirits, from their snares, their lies, and their furious wickedness. Deign, O Lord, to grant us your powerful protection and to keep us safe and sound. We beseech you through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. From the snares of the devil, deliver us, O Lord, that your church may serve you in peace and liberty. We beseech you to hear us, that you may crush down all the enemies of your church, 
we beseech you to hear us. Amen. Let's all use the holy water and bless ourselves. <clears throat> Saint Michael, the Archangel, defend us in the day of battle. Be our safeguard against the wickedness and the snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell, Satan and all other evil spirits who prowl through the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Mary, Queen of all saints, pray for us. Let's pray to Saint Joseph. Hail, guardian of the Redeemer, spouse of the Blessed Virgin Mary. To you God entrusted his only Son. In you Mary placed her trust. With you Christ became man. Blessed Joseph, to us too, show yourself a father and guide us in the path of life. Obtain for us grace, mercy and courage and defend us from every evil. Amen. Friends, today being Ash Wednesday, many of us have taken a lot of decisions, maybe to abstain, maybe to fast, to give up a lot of things. But we ask Jesus for this grace to do according to his will. Maybe we have taken resolutions, so many decisions at the beginning of the year. And now today, on Ash Wednesday, the beginning of the season of Lent, we would have taken a lot of decisions. But many of us, we falter, maybe some of us in about two, three days, some others in two, three weeks, and some others maybe just before Easter. We're not able to follow through. But let's ask Jesus to give us this grace, this season of Lent, to, to give us this grace to understand what he seeks of us. His thoughts, his plans are far above what we can think or plan for ourselves. And so realizing that Jesus stands at the door of our hearts, and if we will open our hearts and welcome him, then we can commune with him together for all of us who have the grace and the gift and the understanding of spending deep hours of prayer. Let us pray for those of us who may not have an understanding of the importance of praying or preparing during the season of Lent. We're going to pray on behalf of all, all those around the world who have not really taken any decisions, who have not sought the Lord during the season of Lent. And on behalf of them, we will continue to pray. We are an intercessory group and we will continue to pray and, and intercede for the world. Together, let us pray. Revelation 3.20 Here I am, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and eat with that person and they with me. Amen. Revelation 3.20 says, Here I am, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and eat with that person and they with me. Amen. Revelation 3.20 says, Here I am, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and eat with that person and they with me. Amen. Revelation 3.20 says, Here I am, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and eat with, the, with that person and they with me. Amen. Revelation 3.20 says, Here I am, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and eat with that person and they with me. Amen. Revelation 3.20 says, Here I am, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and eat with that person and they with me. Amen. Revelation 3.20 says, Here I am, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, 
I will come in and eat with that person and they with me. Amen. Today we have Father Pius Pereira who has offered Mass for, on behalf of all of us. We thank God for the gift of Father Pius and we pray blessings upon him that God may use him and may assist him in his work and in all that he does. Amen. Today we have a beautiful family anchoring the rosary for us. We have Gazella and her children, I'm sorry, Gaina and her children Gazella and Shannon who will anchor the rosary. We will begin in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He went down to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body and life everlasting. Amen. Our Father in heaven, holy be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us, give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Holy Mary, daughter of the eternal father, strengthen our faith. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Holy Mary, Mother of the Beloved Son, increase our hope. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Holy Mary, Radiant temple of the Holy Spirit, deepen our love. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. The first glorious mystery, the resurrection of our Lord Jesus. We continue to pray for broken marriages and strained relationships. The beginning of Lent, we begin on a positive note. Yes, we are called to weep and mourn about our sinfulness and to go to the Lord, to return to the Lord with prayer and fasting and, and repentance. Let us also while we do this, let us also approach the throne of grace with confidence. As Hebrews 4.16 says, we approach the throne of grace with confidence because we know that we have a God who died for us. And we can approach that throne of grace with boldness because he is there to help us in times of need. We're going to pray very specially for, for couples who are torn, no matter what be the reason, maybe there are couples who feel that they are not meant to be, they are incompatible, they just cannot see eye to eye, they cannot see God's will for them together. There are so many couples who want to just separate and, and have nothing to do with each other. We're going to pray and, and claim this, the will of God. What is the will of God? In Matthew 19, 6 says that what God has joined together, let no man put asunder. And so they are no longer two, but one flesh. Maybe there are so many reasons that couples find that they are not, they are not one, but they are two. They're not able to see anything that unites them together. But we see the perfect will of God for marriage, that no one, should put asunder what God has joined. And together as a community, we're going to 
move with confidence to that throne of grace, claiming this will of God, that no marriage will break up, especially those in our own families, our close friends, where we know that that the marriage is breaking up or they're already on the verge of divorce or separation. Let us together as a community go and approach that throne of grace for mercy because it is already given to us. And we approach it knowing what is the will of God that they should not separate, but they should reconcile. And this Lenten season, let there be a resurrection of marriages that take place. Let there be reconciliation. Let there be oneness in spirit. Let God work in broken marriages. We thank God for hearing our prayer. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. O oh my Jesus, forgive us our sins, save our souls from the fires of hell, and lead all souls to heaven, especially those in most need of thy mercy. Mary, Queen of the Most Holy Rosary, pray for us. The second glorious mystery, the ascension of our Lord Jesus, we pray for families. Acts 16, 31 says, Repent and believe in the Lord, and you and your household shall be saved. Friends, most of us, or all of us, are baptized Christians or baptized Catholics. But is it enough for us to be just baptized Christians, but living like unbelievers? We may be baptized, but we may be living like we have no help, like we have no hope. Maybe we are living lives of distress, faithlessness. Maybe on one hand we have devotion and sacraments, but we give in to worry and anxiety and fear. On one hand, we want to draw close to the Lord, but on the other hand, we have in our own families people who live a life of sin, 
of addictions and bondage. We know that Jesus has offered a perfect sacrifice for each of us in the family. And that's why he reminds us, repent and believe in the Lord. You and your household shall be saved. We have to be saved. Our soul is saved because of the blood of Jesus, his death and his resurrection. But here on earth, our family is struck by sickness, is struck by debt, is struck by addiction, by faithlessness, mortal sin, divorce, problems in relationship. We're going to claim this promise that just one of us in the family is enough, is more than enough. That if one of us will truly repent and believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, then we and our entire family will be saved. Let us approach the throne of grace with boldness, with confidence that yes, if I repent and if I turn to the Lord and I believe in Jesus, then I will be saved and so will my entire household will be saved. We thank God for this new hope that God has blessed us with and for this grace during this Lenten season to tr truly turn towards him in the way that pleases him. We thank God for hearing our prayer. Amen. Our oh, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as this in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women. And blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us, sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us, sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us, sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was from beginning is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. O my Jesus, forgive us our sins, save us from the fires of hell, and lead all souls into heaven especially those in most need of thy mercy. Queen of the Most Holy Rosary. Queen of Rose. The third glorious mystery, the descent of the Holy Spirit upon Mother Mary and the apostles in the upper room. We see a beautiful Christian community in this upper room with the Blessed Mother, all her children gathered together in that upper room. In this decade, we are praying very specially for children, our own children, the children of our families, the children of this world. Isaiah 54, 13 says, All your children shall be taught by the Lord, and great shall be their peace. Isaiah 54, 13 says, 
all your children shall be taught by the Lord and great shall be their peace. How many of us mothers, fathers who are worried and anxious about our children? We are worried maybe about their studies, about how they will fare in their school or their college, the decisions that they take for their lives. So many of us are worried for our children's future, their marriage, their life partner. We are worried about their soul. So many of us are worried that our children are far away from God, from prayer, from church, from the sacraments. Matthew 22, 29 says, is it not, are you not mistaken? And here we say, are we not worried or anxious because we know not the power of God, nor the scriptures. When God has given us this beautiful promise, and not a promise of any human being, but God himself gives us this promise in Isaiah 54, 13. All your children shall be taught by the Lord, and great shall be their peace. All we have to do is move in confidence, in, with boldness, to, and approach that throne of grace and claim this promise for our children. Lord, you have said, you yourself have said, Lord, in Isaiah 54, 13, that all your children shall be taught by the Lord and great shall be their peace. Don't we believe that God will himself teach our children, that he himself will take control of our, our children and their future? Maybe we are worried about the decisions that we, they will take, but we pray and we pray with confidence, knowing that our children, whether we are there or not, they will take, they will take decisions based on what God has taught them, based on the wisdom that God has given to each of them. And so today onwards, we leave our anxieties behind. Maybe that's one thing that we can do during this season of Lent that we leave our anxieties about our children at the feet of the Lord, knowing that he has already given us a beautiful promise that he will teach them and he will lead them into peace. We thank God for hearing our prayer. Amen. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. 
Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was at the beginning, is now, and never shall be world without end. Amen. O oh my Jesus, forgive us our sins, save our souls from the fires of hell, lead all souls to heaven, especially those in most need of thy mercy. Mary, Queen of the Most Holy Rosary, pray for us. The fourth glorious mystery, the Assumption of Mother Mary, we pray for our church and for holy vocations. We pray for our Holy Father, all our cardinals, bishops, priests, religious, our sisters, consecrated, our lay faithful missionaries and associations in the church. We pray for Jerome Barnabas, for Nikita Maria Puneet, and for Teresa Mary Abraham, for all our seminarians, our aspirants and novices, all those who are discerning their call. We pray in a very special way during this Lenten season that there will be a great awakening, a great revival in our church, in our spirits. The whole of last year, our churches were shut and the sacraments were stopped and we told our young people and we told ourselves as well that it was enough to sit at home and and attend mass and confess directly to god well there was a time that that was maybe that was needed but today let us pray that the that the faithful will go back to church will go back to the sacraments the church has so beautifully opened up the church the sacraments all over again let us pray that it will not take convincing for people to go back but they will yearn to go back to the church and to receive the sacraments we thank god for hearing our prayer amen our father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women. And blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was at the beginning, is now, and never shall be, world without end. Amen. 
Oh my Jesus, forgive us our sins, save us from the fires of hell, and lead all souls to heaven, especially those in most need of your mercy. Mary, Queen of the Most Holy Rosary, pray for us. The fifth glorious mystery, the coronation of Mother Mary as Queen of Heaven and Earth. We pray for all the intentions that have come to the missionaries of prayer. We bring all our own intentions to the Blessed Mother. We pray, especially during the season of Lent, that each of us may be given this grace to, to learn the Word of God and to move from faith, that is sense knowledge, to faith that comes from the Word. God has already blessed us with every spiritual blessing. And all that we need to do is now move in confidence, knowing that this spiritual blessing of learning the word of God, meditating the word of God, and living the word of God already belongs to us. Let us pray that we just don't give up meat and abstain and do fasting, but we get into a deep, intimate relationship with Jesus. Let this Lent be truly a turning point in our lives. And we thank God for hearing our prayer. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. The kingdom come, the will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. O oh my Jesus, forgive us our sins, save us from the fires of hell, and lead all souls into heaven, especially those in most need of thy mercy. Mary, Queen of the Most Holy Rosary, pray for us. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, Come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Close in prayer. Sweet Mother Mary, I offer thee the spiritual communion to bind our bouquets in a wreath to place upon thy brow. O oh, my mother, I come to you today 
with all the prayers and intercessions of every brother and sister who pray this most holy rosary today and lift thy burdens along with mine to thee. Holy Mother of God, you have never turned away your children who have sought your help and intercession. Look with favor upon our gifts and in thy great love obtain for us these graces. Specify your, your request. Litany of the Blessed Virgin Mary. Lord, have mercy on us. Lord, have mercy on us. Christ, have mercy on us. Christ, have mercy on us. Lord, have mercy on us. Lord, have mercy on us. Christ, yours. Christ, graciously yours. God, the Father of heaven. Have mercy on us. God, the Son, Redeemer of the world. Have mercy on us. God, the Holy Spirit. Have mercy on us. Holy Trinity, one God. Have mercy on us. Holy, Holy Mary. Pray for us. Holy Mother of God. Pray for us. Holy Virgin of Virgins. Pray for us. Mother of Christ. Pray for us. Mother of Divine Grace. Pray for us. Mother Most Pure. Pray for us. Mother Most Chaste. Pray for us. Mother Inviolate. Pray for us. M Mother Undefiled. Pray for us. Mother Most Amiable. Pray for us. Mother Most uh, Admirable. Pray for us. A Mother Good Counsel. Pray for us. Mother of our Creator. Pray for us. Mother of our Savior. Pray for us. Mother of Mercy. Pray for us. Mother of Hope. Pray for us. Virgin Most Prudent. Pray for us. Virgin Most Venerable. Pray for us. Virgin Most Renowned. Pray for us. Virgin Most Powerful. Pray for us. Virgin Most Merciful. Pray for us. Virgin Most Faithful. Pray for us. Mirror of Justice. Pray for us. Seat of Wisdom. Pray for us. Cause of our joy. Pray for us. Spiritual Vessel. Pray for us. Vessel of Honor. Pray for us. Singular Vessel of Devotion. Pray for us. Mystical Rose. Pray for us. Star of David. Pray for us. Star of Ivory. Pray for us. House of Gold. Pray for us. Ark of the Covenant. Pray for us. Gate of Heaven. Pray for us. Morning Star. Pray for us. Health of the Sick. Pray for us. Refuge of sinners. Pray for us. Comforter of the afflicted. Pray for us. Comforter of migrants. Pray for us. Help of Christians. Pray for us. Queen of angels. Pray for us. Queen of patriarchs. Pray for us. Queen of prophets. Pray for us. Queen of apostles. Pray for us. Queen of martyrs. Pray for us. Queen of confessors. Pray for us. Queen of virgins. Pray for us. Queen of all saints. Pray for us. Queen conceived without original sin. Pray for us. Queen assumed into heaven. Pray for us. Queen of the most holy rosary. Pray for us. Queen of peace. Pray for us. Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Pray us, O Lord. Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Graciously hear us, O Lord. Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Pray for us, O Holy Mother of God. That we may be worthy of the promises of Christ. Let us pray. Grant, we beseech thee, O Lord God, that we, thy servants, may enjoy perpetual health of mind and body, and by the glorious intercession of the Blessed Mary, ever virgin, be delivered from present sorrow and enjoy eternal happiness through Christ our Lord. Amen. And let's pray very specially for this family. We thank God for the gift of Auntie Gaynor, Gisela, Shannon, and, his, and their brother to this community. We thank God that God has taken control of their lives, their family, and is their provider. We thank God for, for giving them the breakthroughs that they have been praying for and that they see light in the darkness. Amen. We will all bow down for the priestly blessing. Um, my Father Benedict. Okay. Um, Father, I think, is not able to sign in. Um, so we will start our Bible study. So good evening. Uh, good evening, friends. Uh, we will get into the...
Uh, Brother Johnson, you there? Oh, here you are. <laughs> You're on mute. Yeah. But thank you. So let us. Uh, so before we start, it's, uh, just a reminder: those who would like to access the videos of uh, the Bible study that we have been doing, it is available uh, on our uh, uh, YouTube channel, Happy Families Ministries, Bangalore. Uh, if you do not uh, uh, find this uh, this channel, there are a lot of happy families yeah. out on the YouTube. In case if you get confused, uh, you can send me a message, WhatsApp message. I will share with you the link for you to join. My number is 9686681391. Uh, so we will have this Bible study starting now. We'll end at 6.30. So please uh, park your questions till 6.15. Between 6.15 and 6.30, we will take the questions and close it at 6.30. So we will start. Let us pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Father, into your hands we place this evening. Let your spirit move our hearts. Let, uh, let your spirit open our hearts, our minds, that the words that we receive today may be, may be cemented in our hearts and change our lives uh, for your glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Over to you, brother. So let's begin our foundation scripture to make our spirit strong. Because when your spirit is strong, you can face every trial, every infirmity, every opposition in your life. Yes. Praise God. Let's start with the foundation scripture. Yeah, Brother Jules. The strong spirit of a man sustains him in bodily pain or trouble, but a weak and broken spirit who can raise up or bear. So we learn that the spirit of a man becomes strong when he feeds himself with the word of God and he gets more and more deeper and deeper revelation from God and gets into a relationship with God. So then he is a person who is facing every trial with a champion-like mindset or a conqueror's mindset, not of a mindset of a victim. So we learned yesterday, yeah, read this. A strong spirit makes a way for God to move. If you are talking doubt and unbelief, it shuts the door to the supernatural. Having a strong spirit keeps the door open for God to move. A person who has got a strong spirit, he, li he lives by faith and not by sight. So he's moved by the word of God and not by the wisdom of this world. Mm. So even when he speaks, he does not speak doubts and unbelief, mm. but he speaks faith according to the word of God. And that's how he operates in the, in the realm of the spirit. He is operating in the supernatural. Mm. So remember, having a strong spirit keeps the door open for God to move. Amen? Amen. So if you are a person with worry, it's a symptom that you have got a weak spirit and you need to make your spirit strong. Then you will be able to overcome the situations and crisis in your life. Amen? Amen. So we finish this, sorry. Finish this. Okay, today we are going to study this. Yeah. We can build a barrier, a force field, a wall of protection around us. So when the storms of life hit, we stand like a rock, unshaken and unmovable. Now, have you heard storms of life? Yeah. So in everybody's life, there are storms. Yes. Now we must understand that there are three kinds of storm and the solution for three kinds of storm is different. Mm -hmm. Let's look at the first storm. The first storm is a storm where I am the cause of the storm. Mm -hmm. Let's take some examples from the Bible. 
Jesus spoke about a parable in Luke 15 that a man had two sons, mm. the elder son and the younger son. The younger son decided that he doesn't want to stay with his father and therefore he asked his father's property, his share. And when the father gave him the share, even before his death, which is not right from the point, son's point of view, to ask for the share. But when he asked for the share, the father uh, did not stop him, but gave him the share. Okay. And when he gave him the share, the son was not satisfied because he was too close. Uh, he was living under the shadow of his father. So he had no liberty to live his life the way he wanted. And to have that liberty, he went away from his father. And the Bible says he went to a distant country. And he went there and he spent the money that he had, the resources, with loose kind of living. That means what his father had earned, which was something very uh, special, something very good. He exchanged for pleasure of um, sin in exchange of what his father had given and now he blew up all that he had received from his father and there came a famine in that country and now he went around asking for help from his friends and his friends also did not give him any help so he had no other option but to find a job so he found a job to look after the pigs and he was looking after the pigs and there he his job did not provide him even food and shelter he was living with the pigs and eating the food of the pigs. Now, in a condition like this, he began to consider his father's house and the servants in his father's house. And he came to his senses and he made a remark saying, in my father's house, there are servants, but they are well taken care of. So I am here. So let me also get up and go to my father's house not as a son, but to go as a servant, at least I will have better, better position or better environment than what I'm here. And he makes a decision to leave that country and come to his father's house. Now, what was the reason why this son reached that position? Was it the devil or was it the son's own decision to go from his father's house which was the fountain of life and go to a country which was glittering and tempting and calling him for a great future and he got tempted and got caught up in that and he made that decision to exchange all that he had for pleasure of sin now what was the reason why the son reached that rock bottom Jose? Flesh and the world. Sorry? Flesh and the world. So it was his own decision, right? His own de yes. Yes. So his own the flesh reason and that world. he got into a mess was his own reason, right? Yeah. So yeah. what was the way out? His own decision. It's repent and, repent and come back. Right. The repentance was that I don't want to continue in this country anymore. I will change my thinking, the direction of my life, and I will come back to my father's house. So every step of disobedience took him further away from his father till he went deep down into the pit. In the same way, every step of repentance brought him closer and closer to his father where everything would bring forth restoration so even though he was far away from his father's house did his father recognize him yes who ran to whom the son ran to the father or the father ran to the son father ran to the son now when you leave a job you have to take permission from that company before you resign and go but in Jesus is teaching us in the kingdom of heaven when a child of God or any person makes a decision that I want to go to the father's house, he does not need to take the Satan's permission. He can just walk out of that job and come 
to the father's house, the father will handle the devil. Amen? Amen. Because if you had to go and ask permission, Satan will never give you the permission. You have every right, your freedom of choice, that you can use that freedom of choice and make a decision to come back home. Praise God. Now, when he came back, the father hugged him, kissed him, accepted him, and then heard his confession. The moment he said that I've sinned against you, father, I've sinned against God, and I need forgiveness. The father at once, without the son doing one good thing, only by repentance, restored everything to him. The first thing he gave him was the coat of uh, righteousness. Now, what is so special about the coat of righteousness? Yeah. He restored uh, the son's right as the son of the father. What is righteousness, brother? Righteousness is uh, father, son's uh, faith in God. Righteousness means right standing before right standing. God, where he has got absolutely no... Um, Okay. No uh, guilt feeling. Mm. Okay. So so it is also having the right nature of God. Mm. Okay. Now watch this. Read this. Tenth verse. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My whole being shall exult in my God. For he has clothed me with the garments of salvation. He has covered me with a robe of righteousness. As a bridegroom decks himself with a garland, as a bride adorns herself with her jewels. Praise God. Praise God. Now, is he saying, I will rejoice in the Lord or I will greatly rejoice in the Lord? I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. Why is the prophet Isaiah saying, I will greatly rejoice in the Lord? He is giving you the reason on the fourth line. For he has covered me with the robe of righteousness. No, no, third line, third line first. For he has clothed me with the garment of salvation. The word salvation, what does it mean? The word salvation means to experience God and because of that, you have from him eternal life, you have healing, you have deliverance, you have protection, you have prosperity, you have preservation, you have joy, you have peace. Nothing is broken, nothing is missing. The whole package is salvation. Now, do now here is he saying that I will work hard to get my salvation, or is the word saying that he has clothed me with a garment of salvation? He has clothed me with the garment of salvation. So did I sweat to get it or did, I, did Jesus sweat to get it for me? <laughs> Jesus gave it free to me. But then he says, he has covered me with what? Robe of righteousness. Now which one comes outer garment and which one is the inner garment? The robe is the outer garment or the garment is the inner garment? Outer garment. Robe is the outer garment. So in other words, he's saying, all that we are longing for, of all that we are longing for, is only your inner garment. Mm. But the rope of righteousness is your outer garment. Now, why is that rope of righteousness so very important to be my outer garment? That's your protection against the accusations of the evil one. Amen. So every time the devil is accusing you, because you have been declared righteous by God, there's no more guilt feeling. There's no more condemnation. And you can stand firm because that rope is covered with the blood of Jesus. Mm. So when the person repents and comes back, the first thing that happens is what happened in the, uh, in the Garden of Eden is God sacrificed the animal skin, animal and took its skin. So when you take the skin, the skin is covered with the blood and God covered their nakedness, their shame with the animal skin in the old covenant, but in the new covenant, he, we are covered by the blood of Jesus and therefore all our shame and everything is, uh, is taken away 
by Jesus and we are covered with the glory of God. That is why we are uh, rejoicing. Mm. The second thing is that, uh, you know, uh, the, the, the father gave him the ring of authority. The ring of authority means that you are no longer a slave, but you are my son. So he restored him back to his sonship when he repented and came back. Third thing, he put sandals on his feet. Thorns and thistles, which we were growing because of the curse and which damages and which hurts your feet. The Lord says, I will take the responsibility to protect you and I will give you the shoes of salvation so that now you are representing heaven on earth and you are the son of God. And now with the shoes of salvation, you are taking the good news in the right direction and not in exchange of pleasure of sin. Amen. Amen. And Amen. then there was a calf which was cut and there was a feasting. And the reason it was feasting because the father was celebrating that my son who was spiritually dead has come back alive. Yeah. Now let's say we were all called for this, uh, for this uh, party. Okay. And all of us are sitting there and we are discussing among ourselves and somebody says, you know what? The son has come back from, he had gone to a distant country and he has come. So Jose might be asking me, uh, has the son become a pilot or engineer or this or that? Now tell me uh, honestly, will any father have a celebration because his son has come back? from becoming a pilot, becoming an engineer, achieving something in life, I can understand. But this fellow has come back what? With nothing. So is the father celebrating? Yeah, normal father won't celebrate. Huh? Normal father won't celebrate. Normal father will give him a good sermon. Yeah. <laughs> and what about the mother, Jessie? One more sermon. Praise God. But for the father, Jesus says, the greatest treasure for heaven is when the soul comes back home in repentance. So the younger son's storm stopped. When did he stop? When he came back. When he repented. Repented and father accepted. Yeah. Okay. Now in our life, there are many storms where we are the reason. Mm -hmm. What would have happened if the son would be praying and praying and praying and asking the father, uh, please provide me with some resources, please provide me with a job, please provide this and please provide that. But he would have never shifted from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of light. Will the storm stop? No. So how many of us have been the cause of the storm and we want to, uh, we want the storm to stop without we repenting and making the correction, but we want the things from the heavenly kingdom to satisfy our needs. Mm. So in the kingdom of God, is it that you pursue the need or you pursue the kingdom? You pursue the kingdom. But most of us are pursuing what? Need. Okay, now, Jesus gave us a uh, example and then the elder son came back the elder brother mm. and he saw there is music and there's dance and all that and he began to ask the servant what's going on mm. and one of the servants said your brother who was gone has come back mm. now what happened to the elder brother mm. was he annoyed yes annoyed so was he ready to come home he was not what was he saying He's saying that uh, father has never given me one after, you know, one... A kid? Yeah. The kid. young one of a goat. Yeah. 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 And, uh, you know, my brother who has spent all the money on prostitutes and, uh, you know, all those uh, activities, when they came back, he gave, he killed the calf and celebrated. So, okay. this is complaint. Now, was he ready to change? He was not ready to change. He was not willing to come in. So what did he say? Either he stays or I stay. Have you heard that dialogue? 
<laughs> yes, I have heard the dialogue. Okay, okay. Now, among the two sons, which one was the dangerous one? The, the eldest one. But most of the time, we, we preach what? We preach about the youngest one. The youngest son had no problem to come back home regarding his father, regarding God. Hmm. But the youngest son always had problem with the elder brothers who are there inside, who would condemn him and judge him and never accept him till the end. Hmm. Whom is Jesus talking to this parable? He's talking to the Pharisees. Mm. Are we most of the time the elder son inside the church? Because yeah. we have been in the church all our life. Yeah. And when the younger son comes back, once upon a time might they have been a drug addict or alcoholic and he has come and he's changed his life. Does the elder brother get angry? Yeah. And when he comes back and he comes back with faith and he begins to operate in the gifts of the Holy Spirit and so many mighty things are happening through his hand and the Pharisees were there all their life and nothing was happening. Will they get annoyed? Yes. Does this happen today in this world? Yes. So which one is more dangerous? When we are self-righteous? Self-righteous. And self-righteous person, it is, Jesus did not say at the end he came home or not. But if he doesn't come home, the elder brother, even though he was in his father's house, ended up in hell. Hmm. So is it possible for a person to live all his life in the church, in all the activities of the church and still qualify to go to hell? Yes. Because of his pride and arrogance and ego. Hmm. Because he was not ready to accept his brother. Oh. So there are two kinds of extreme. One is the younger brother who repented and came back. Mm. And he stayed in his father's house, a totally changed person. But the elder brother was self-righteous. He was actually having no love at all. And uh, the Bible says, if you're a child of God, how will you know that you are my disciple? By loving your brothers. Uh -huh. By loving I your brothers. Know that you are my disciples by your love. Yeah. So now was he actually operating in love or was he operating in hatred? In hatred. And when a person is hating somebody, is he, is he uh, a child of God or is a child of the devil? He's a murderer. The Bible speaks. Yes. So most of the time, this storm will stop by me repenting or asking God to change my situation? By repenting. What about Jonah? Jonah repented. But when he was going in the opposite direction, God told him to go to Nineveh. He was going to Tarshish because he hated the people. Yeah. That they deserve it. Yeah. And when he went on the opposite side, did he have to face all those storms of life? Yes. When did he change? When he was in the belly for three days. Yeah. So when are we going to change? Before we get into the belly or after we get into the belly? Before we get into the belly. So every day is, a, is an opportunity for us to change because we are not changing. That self-destruction is activated by us. And the only way to stop the storm is repentance. And that's why Jesus went around saying, Repent for the kingdom of heaven is close at hand. So, so in, in many cases, in many cases, the desires of the flesh has been the cause of the storm. And when that is the cause, you need to repent. And only your repentance can put an end to the storm. And recovery and restoration can come by faith in believing in what Jesus did for us. On the cross and that's why you need a strong spirit to understand the situation and when you repent now repentance does not mean change of action oh. repentance means change of thinking oh. because everything that we ever do it's based on our thinking oh. so if my thinking is wrong my action will go wrong so 
wrong thinking will not change my actions hmm. but right thinking will change my wrong actions but right actions will not change my wrong thinking correct my wrong thinking can be changed by the renewing of the mind through the word of god and that's why you need to feed your spirit with the word of god and ask god to give you the revelation by which you you get the truth amen amen now the second storm is uh we know about uh, uh let's say mark mark chapter 4 and in this jesus has been teaching the classic uh teaching on the sower and the seed and how it works mm. and after he shared how it works then came then he said let us go across to the other side i'm not going through the scriptures because we have got less time you can read it and uh, the, and jesus went off to sleep i want you to read the 38th verse but he was in the stern asleep on the cushion and they woke him up and said to him teacher do you not care that we are perishing he woke up and rebuked the wind and said to the sea peace be still then the wind ceased and there was a dead calm he said to them why are you afraid have you still no faith and they were filled with great awe and said to one another who then is this that even the wind and the sea obey him now in this storm hmm. uh there was also a storm that brought uh, them close to death praise hmm. god praise and god. in this storm it was not their sin but this storm was the cause of this storm was satanic hmm. now in this storm when the storm came there there was nothing to repent but there was a storm where you got to learn to take your authority and speak to the storm mm. so there is a time when satan is the cause you can't repent because your 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 wrong decision or your carnal decision is not the cause of the storm and that's the time you need to use and exercise the authority given to us by jesus hmm. now when they were in this condition when you see there what did they say teacher do you not care that we are perishing now when a person is in fear will he be confused yes will he be deceived yes will he be uh, believing the wrong thing yes now you mean to say jesus had no care for them no so when a person is in a storm why was jesus sleeping whereas others were struggling because jesus knows what he would do so jesus was believing that his father was protecting him yes how does he know because he is the son of god the mute or that the jew from chennai you know it is from here johnson ha huh? say it again microphone is unmuted us 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 microphone is who said something yeah, now okay uh so uh, noel was saying some I'm, i'm asking jude from chennai because he will give me some answers ah <laughs> uh, yes <laughs> thank you brother uh, so here you... here we are all learning brother please don't don't misunderstand me please okay okay yeah. uh, i think that jesus was trying to see how we face the situation whether we are listening to his word or not <laughs> so jesus was sure that he would be saved ah uh, he was sure he was sure what he would, he would do but he was testing whether they really have faith now please understand jesus is not god he is man 
Yeah, he is God and man, true God and true man. Yeah, he is. But but when he is fighting the battle, he is not fighting as uh, God. That's why he emptied his glory and came in the form of a servant as man. Okay. If if Jesus has to fight the battle as God, he gets disqualified because God cannot be tempted. The Bible says God cannot be tempted. He is not fighting any battle as God. Please. If he fights the battle as God, he got disqualified because Adam lost the battle as man, not as God. He is man. Adam is man, and Jesus has to come as man, even though he is God. But on earth, that's why he is a son of man. Okay. He cannot attack as son of God, but he has to attack as son of man. Now let me show you. Many people think that. Jesus is a son of God. That's why he could face everything and all those things. Now read this, and you will be shocked of your life. Hmm. That is a nice way of uh, you know. Now read, brother. In the days of his flesh, Jesus offered up prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears. With, with? loud cries and tears. Hold on. Did you ever think that? <laughs> yeah. Did you ever know that? Yeah, I knew that. This is my favorite verse. And then how come you did not answer me? No, we just coming to that, right? You jumped uh, the gun. Okay. <laughs> okay. With okay. loud cries and tears. To the one who was able to save him from death. So was he every day, every night, praying with loud cries and tears, asking? For protection from Satan. Yes. So was it by default, or did he have to pray? He has to pray. And how yes. was his prayer? How was it? How was his prayer? His prayer was uh, in tears and in loud cries. What if he had not to pray? He would not have been able to. He would not be protected. Uh, as as a man. So why do we need to pray? To protect ourselves from the devil. So, so why can't God save us without praying? That is the law of the king kingdom. Why 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 why? Uh, because. Uh, okay, let's see why. Because when you understand this, then you understand why. Please read. Then God said, "Let us make humankind in our image, according to our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea." Pause. Pause. Let us make, and let them have. Oh. So who has dominion on earth? We. So can God interfere in our affairs, because He has limited Himself with His own words? By saying, from now on, earth belongs to mankind. Mm. Dominion on earth belongs to mankind, and mm. if he has to interfere in our affairs, he needs us to call out to him. Amen. Mm. Are you following? Yes. So it's all the kingdom system. Yes. So for Jesus to get his protection, did he have to call? For protection, yes, he has to, and that is why he himself what offered uh, his supplication, prayers, and supplication with loud cries and tears. Okay, the one who was able to save him from death, and he was heard because of his reverent submission. So, so was he protected because of that? Yes. He was, so was, he, was he saved from death? No. That's what he's saying. Look at this. He was, no, he was uh, because of his reverent submission. Submission is uh, even though you have a please, please, please read this. He you was heard. heard. Yeah. So Satan tried to kill Jesus many a times. Yes. But it was God's intervention to protect him. And to get that protection, he was always in contact with the Father. Mm. So when he has been in the contact with the Father, is Jesus at rest that my I have, my Father is my protector? 
Yes. But is Satan trying to kill him in that sea? Yes. What if Jesus had to die there? Jesus, what if Jesus had to die? Jesus has to die on the cross. Correct. If he dies anywhere, mm. then the plan of salvation cannot be fulfilled. Yeah. The reason is the cross is because of man's disobedience, the punishment is crucifixion. Mm. And Jesus has to become a substitute on that cross. And if he does not become that substitute on the cross, mankind cannot be saved. And that's why Jesus is asking for protection of his death from death every time. And the Bible says he was heard because of his reverent submission. Uh -huh. So when does our prayer get answered? When does our relationship begins to get activated with the glory of God? When we are submissive to the word of God. Mm. That's why the Bible says, submit to God. And then you resist the devil. He'll flee from you. Mm. So God is not going to make the devil flee. You first submit to God. Your submission will activate the anointing. And now with your submission, attack the devil, rebuke him, and he will flee from you. Mm. So if you're not in submission and you're trying to rebuke the devil, it won't work. Mm. And then what does it say after that? Although, Although he was a son, he learned obedience through what he suffered. So how are you and I going to learn obedience? Through suffering? When you are suffering for the kingdom mm. and you are submissive to the gospel, mm. you are submissive to the word of God, mm. you begin to learn the things of the kingdom of heaven because now you are not your defender. God is your defender. Mm. Then, next line. And having been made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him. So, was Jesus made perfect by his obedience? Yes. So, in the same way, when we are in the trials, are those trials supposed to kill us? Or are those trials supposed to help us to become better and better by submitting to God's word in obedience? Yes. So do we look at trials as an opportunity to be an overcomer and become rich with the treasures of heaven? Or we are looking at trials because our focus is on material needs. Mm -hmm. So was Jesus focused on material needs or spiritual needs? Spiritual needs. So Jesus was rich in treasure of material needs or spiritual needs? Spiritual needs. So one, when one person came and told him, Jesus, I want to follow you. What did Jesus say? Even the foxes have holes. Mm. The birds of the air have nests. Yeah. But the son of man has? No place to stay. Means what? He, he, he is not rich in, in his uh, physical needs, but he's extremely rich in spiritual needs. So also in our life, which one are we seeking in the midst of a storm? Our focus is to grow in spiritually or our focus is to grow in money? It should be focused to grow. In... Not it should be, brother. You tell me, no. <laughs> Don't twist the answer, brother. Today, yeah. Jude is not there. Jude, brother, Jude. Focus is on the spiritual. Yeah, we tend to always focus on the temporal needs. Yes. Because our focus is on perishing, corrupted things and not on the treasures of heaven, we do not uh, use our trials to grow higher, but we get caught up in a crisis and we are broken because we have not understood the system. So in this, in this storm, what was the way to get out of this storm? In this storm, there is not repentance, but in this storm, 
to learn obedience and use the authority that comes from God and for us it comes through Christ and rebuke the devil and the storm of life will stop. That is why you find many a times people who have got bodies which are sick for years when they come for the retreat the first thing they repent mm. they go for confession recovery has begun mm. and when the priest is taking authority and rebuking the demonic forces and sicknesses and disease at once people in the congregation start getting healing why so that's how you stop the storm of life mm. Are you understanding yes yeah, yeah. Now the third storm is very interesting. The third storm is you're not the cause, neither is Satan the cause. In this storm, it is the, the person with whom you are associated with is the cause. For example, a husband and wife, mm. are they in covenant? Yes. Yes. Can they separate from each other? No. Yes. no. So they, are, they, are, they are fused together and become one flesh. Yeah. Now the wife is a spiritual person, but the husband is a gambler. Mm. So will that gambling affect his life? Yes. Because of that bad situation, will it affect the wife as well? Yes. Will it affect the children as well? Yes. So now in this storm, does the wife need to repent? Uh, wife. No, because she has not done the problem. The problem yeah. is with the husband. Yeah. But because she is associated with the husband and she's not the cause, but he is the cause, she's also in 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 disturbed waters. Hmm. Correct? Now she's rebuking the devil. Yeah. Okay. But he is inviting the devil. Yeah. So what is the remedy for the third third storm? Yeah, Jesse, you are saying something. Yeah, you can unmute. Brother, can you give her unmute? Yeah. It is forgiveness and love which you, you have received from God, which you can give and continue to love because that is what God says. Love your neighbor as yourself. And when we understand the power of forgiveness I have received as a sinner, I can love still in spite of what happens and that will bring healing. Excellent. And that's what you see about Joshua and Caleb. Okay. In the third storm, Joshua and Caleb were operating in faith and they said, we can take over the land. But because the community said, no, we are not going in, they also had to go into the wilderness for 40 years. Now, in those 40 years, did they quit? No. no. They kept their focus still on the promised land. And uh, Caleb was 40. And by the time he reached the place where there were giants, Caleb was 45 uh, after 45 years. So he's 85 years. Mm. And after 85 years, he's talking to Joshua and saying, you remember you and I had come from the same land and I had spoken to Moses at that time that I want to go and kill the giants and take over the land. So as for my tribe, I don't want any other land but this land. Because there was distribution of uh, the land for each tribe. Mm. And Caleb is telling Joshua at the age of 85 that he want to go and kill those giants. Now, for 45 years, he has not quit his faith. He has not quit his endurance. Mm. And he is now 85. When he went in, he was 40. And the best part is the army that he's going to take over to this land are those who are born in the desert and they have never fought a single battle in their life. Yeah. Would you like to take such people and go for a fight? Yeah. And that too with the giants? Yes. Yes? Yes. So is victory a guarantee? Yes. The boys who have been in the wilderness, they have never fought a single battle. They have not seen anything. Because all this time, God was providing them with food, water, everything. Mm. And this time, they are going to go for a battle. Would you, want, would you like to have people in your congregation who have never fought a single battle 
they don't even know how to carry how to hold the weapon and you are going in for a fight against the giants what do you think about that humanly it is uh, not a good uh, idea so is caleb at the age of 40 depending on god and saying let us go and take over the land because god has given us the land is he still stuck to that same promise even at 85 yes even though his resources have become more weaker his body is more weaker than before but is does the promise stand the same yes how many of us stand on the promise when you are not the cause but somebody close to you in your family is the cause what jesse said was absolutely right i if i get annoyed i give room to the devil to strike and destroy my family but if i continue to plant the seed of love and wait with patience so how is the third battle fought with patience how do you know a person is a christian matured christian what is his capacity to stay patient in the midst of a trial oh. how much can he endure and not get his fuse blown off is a matured christian oh. and the bible says look at this this last scripture then we have some questions whoever wants to ask so yeah. my time is up yeah do you know one hour is over <laughs> yeah yeah read my brother and sisters whenever you face trials of any kind consider it nothing but joy because you know that the testing of your faith produces endurance and let endurance have its full effect so that you may be mature and complete and lacking in nothing if any of you no, is only, only that much. let endurance let endurance have its full effect now let endurance have its full effect do you know what endurance does your when capacity. a person is with patience mm. and endurance it it makes the devil go crazy Mm. it demoralizes the devil and it confuses the devil because a person with patience stays connected to god mm. have you ever lost your patience brother <laughs> it ends so when you lose your patience the first thing you should ask what did i fear that caused me to lose my patience because fear is the root patience or, impatience is the fruit or is it pride at the root uh, to lose no no, no. It, it's fear fear is the root for example if i get angry uh, you know i you know i endure not to get angry i endure patience uh, you know then at one point in time i break so is so what, it uh, the reason you break is because the physical situations what you are understanding Yeah. looks like it is going out of your hand it looks like you okay. you are going to become a victim it looks like you you are going to lose mm. and at that time out of uh when you walk out of faith and you get into fear the result is impatience mm. okay so it's not a pride okay so 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 what does endurance do helps you to become mature okay yeah now as jesse was saying that when you plant the seed of love and forgiveness it is like she taking the dumbbells she is in the gym mm. and uh, the person who is troubling her is putting pressure on her and she is taking the same pressure and using it as dumbbells exercising her endurance Mm. so actually speaking she is building up her spiritual muscles and she is getting more and more maturity mm. let me give you an example jesse is working for you jos and mm. you are a very lenient boss very nice mm. and she worked under you for 3 years with full of compassion and even if she makes a mistake she said okay okay fine and her timing is 9 she comes at 
Mm. Suddenly you got transferred. Mm. And I come in that place. Mm. Now what time she's coming to office? 10. 10. I look at her and I say in one line, next time, if I don't see you at 9 o'clock at your table, you are fired. Just one line. Mm. Nothing else. What time she'll come? She'll come at 8.45. She comes at 9. Yeah. And I told her, I told you, 9 o'clock on your seat. Because after coming, you put your makeup and all for 15 minutes. I will not tolerate all that. This is the last one. Next time, there will be no more mercy. Now, will she come 10 minutes early? Yes. Now, why has she changed when 3 years she did not change? Fear. Of losing the job. So, has it helped her to get herself disciplined? Yes. So, what if she does not care? She will lose her job. That's what is happening. So, when a person uses the battles to discipline and build up their spiritual muscles, they not only become victorious, but they are trained for the next level of battle. So they are promoted and they are rewarded for the next level. But if a person is not ready to change, he has not only lost the battle, he has lost the reward and has lost what God had planned in his life. And that's why you find in the life of Joseph, he went through all those things, but his endurance skills were to the maximum. And that's why he matured and he was complete that now God could position him to become the governor of Egypt. When a person is saying, I want promotion, along with promotion comes responsibility. And if you're not able to take the responsibility at pressure 10 and you want promotion of 20, you will end up committing suicide. Mm -hmm. My time is over. Yeah. So any questions, uh, you know, anybody has, uh, can, you can shoot those questions now. So we can build a barrier, a force field, a wall of protection around us. So when the storm of life hit, we stand like a rock. So in this, uh, in this Brother, just one. Yeah, sure. Go ahead, Rachel. Sorry, just one thing. You mentioned ring of authority and sandals of salvation. I didn't quite get that. Sorry. When you were talking about the prodigal son, you spoke about you you were explaining the ring of authority and sandals of salvation. Yeah, you go I to chapter six, it gives you the armor. Yes. Okay. Okay. That Thank armor, you. see, when you have that ring, no? Whenever there was a, a document to be signed, they would put the seal of the ring. Okay, now in the same way, yes. when a person has come back from the kingdom of darkness and has renewed his mind and is in the kingdom of his father, now like a son, I can go and destroy the kingdom of darkness by taking the authority. Now this ring can be seen, this ring can be seen, but there is a ring of authority that has been given to us uh, according to Ephesians chapter six. So when you know your authority, you are going and casting out demons. So what is the good news? Once upon a time, the demons were controlling you. But now when you come to Jesus, through Jesus, you have inherited his anointing that you are casting out demons, not only for your life, but you are going around and casting out demons in other people's life and setting the captives free. And that is the work of a Christian. Amen. Thank you. And, and the sandals in your feet is again the, the sandals that you wear carrying the good news of the news of salvation. Again in Ephesians 6, it speaks about the armor of God. Amen. Hello. Yes, brother. Yeah. Thank you. So, so when you thank you, brother. When you understand, when you come back, uh, all these things are equipped and all you need to do is believe and step out in faith and you will see it manifesting. Amen.
So the kingdom of heaven can be enjoyed by anybody. The master key is repentance. Mm. And again, repentance is not change of action. It is first change of thinking. Mm. A person is doing with willpower. And a person is doing with change of thinking. There's a big difference. A mother looking after the child out of love when the child is sick. And the same mother as a nurse doing the duty to look after the, somebody else's child. After eight hours, she doesn't want to work. But her own child, she can work for one week, two weeks, non-stop, and still continue because here it is out of love. In the same way, I obey the word, not because I will get punished, not because I will lose this, or I'll lose that. No, no, no. I obey the word of God because I love him. Brother, one last question. So in this example, what you said about fear, in my example, because of the fear, I lost control and I gave up my patience, my endurance. But in Jesse's example, because of the fear resulted in her... No, you got mute. I can't hear you. No, in my example... I think... Yeah, there is some... Can you hear him? Yes, brother. Oh, we can, yes, we brother. can hear oh, Is it my we internet? Can. We can hear you, but... Uh... Now we can hear you. Okay. So there is a mosquito thing which is going on at the back background. Anyway, so in my example, the, because of the fear, I lost out. You know, I lost my patience. I gave in to, you know, uh, the sin. But in Jesse's example, uh, because of the fear, she became more disciplined. She, because Not because of fear, sorry. Because uh -huh. of the faith. No, she, because of her? No, because faith, 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 faith. faith. Mm -hmm. she, she said a beautiful line, because I've been forgiven so much, mm -hmm. I look at his mistakes with love for the forgiveness that I've received. No, 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 I'm talking about she coming late uh, to the early... She's giving you the parable of the uh, servant of 10,000 talents and 100 shillings. So mm -hmm. she's saying, I've been forgiven 10,000. So what he's doing is only 100 shillings. So it's okay for me to keep forgiving and keep planting the seed of love that one day everything is going to change. Is that right, Jesse? No, no. I Okay, fine. I will take it offline. Uh, we will... Uh, okay, so that is it, uh, brother. Today, we are on time. I, I've been a good boy. You told me. <laughs> Yes. You have to go to work. Please stick to 6.30. I stick to 6.30. Yes. Thank you so much. Please uh, message the uh, message any clarifications you have uh, so that we can you know, get the thing clarified. Uh. And, and I believe, you know, brother, what is very important is what we are speaking here are truths. Yes. So when Jesus went around, he did not go around healing people or praying over people. Mm. He went around preaching the gospel. Why preaching the gospel? Because preaching of the gospel is where corrections have to be made. Mm. So people who make corrections are winners. People mm. who hear the gospel but don't make corrections, their life still remains the same. Yeah. Mm. So it is not that you attended this Bible class so you are blessed. No, that, that would be foolishness. People who hear and make the corrections are the ones who are building the house on the solid rock. The storm yeah. will come, everything will come, but your house will stand firm. Amen. Amen. So, so my season of my trial can change how quick I am taking the change. Uh, response of faith and endurance. Amen. Faith and endurance are twin brothers. Faith opens the door of heaven. Invisible rim, patience keeps the door open till it is manifested. Amen. So you cannot, you cannot go with one brother. It's always twins. Faith and patience. In the same way, joy and peace are twin brothers or sisters. They always go together. When a person is believing, he'll have two things. He'll have peace and he will have joy. Right. And the joy of the Lord is my strength. So in the battle, this, this component should be at the peak you can face any trial of your life. Amen. And, and, and very important is your riches are not counted in material needs. Your riches are counted in spiritual needs. 
So when you're focused on your spiritual needs, our spiritual riches, by default, the material things will come because he said, Jesus said, when you seek this treasure of the heavenly kingdom, mm. everything else that you're worried about, mm. which the Gentiles are worried about, mm. which the pagans are worried about, you will get it free, added to you by my heavenly father. Amen. So let us pray. So, so the formula is very simple. You yeah. see the heavenly treasure, the earthly treasure will be added unto you. Yeah. Amen. Okay, brother. Uh, so again, it will start. Yeah. Let us see. Yeah. Father, we thank you for this beautiful uh, time of uh, learning together, Lord, as one community. Lord, it is your spirit that unites our hearts. And we thoroughly enjoy what we heard, what we learned. And we pray that we may sustain your word in our hearts and produce uh, the fruits a uh, hundredfold, hundred times. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Brother Johnson. Thank you, everyone. God bless you all. all. Love you. you. See you tomorrow. Bye-bye. See you tomorrow. Thanks, Brother. Thanks. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks.